Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Quran Weekly, this is your brother Omar Sulaiman. Remember that story of that man in the time of the Prophet وسلم, who used to get drunk so much that they, he kept on coming back to the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, kept having him flogged and it got to a point one time that Umar anhu actually cursed him because he was so frustrated with seeing this man brought to the Prophet وسلم, over and over and over again because he kept getting drunk and the Prophet وسلم, said لا تلعنه, do not curse him. Because verily he loves Allah and His Messenger And you might be thinking to yourself, wow, who was this man? And inshallah ta'ala today we're going to talk about him. His name was Nu'iman ibn Amr radiallahu anhu from the tribe of An-Najjar, from the Ansar, from Al-Madina. Nu'iman is an extremely interesting character and we can easily class him as the funniest Sahabi that ever lived. So this was a man that was one of the veterans of Badr, he witnessed Uhud, he witnessed Khandaq, he witnessed all of the major battles with the Prophet ﷺ. He became one of the closest companions to the Prophet ﷺ. He married the sister of Abdul Rahman ibn Auf anhu. But he had a habit of pulling pranks on the Prophet ﷺ himself and on the Sahaba over and over and over again. And the Prophet ﷺ always appreciated that. For example, uh, there was a, a large a caravan that was coming from outside of Medina and they had delicate, expensive, exotic fruit. He took it to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, this is a gift to you. The Prophet ﷺ ate it and enjoyed it. And then whenever they came to Nu'iman demanding repayment, Nu'iman said, I didn't eat it. The Messenger of Allah ate it. You should go to him and request it from him. So these guys go to the house of the Prophet ﷺ and they say, we want the money for the fruits. And the Prophet ﷺ said, what are you talking about? That was given to me as a gift. So Rasulullah ﷺ called Nu'iman. And he said, Nu'iman, didn't you say that this was a gift from you? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I wanted you to be the first to try this fruit because I felt like you were the most deserving, but I didn't have the money. So, Ya Rasulullah, pay the man. And Rasulullah, he laughed, he paid the man. But if you really look at his life, subhanAllah, you see some extreme examples. Once Rasulullah had a man who was sitting with him in his home. This was a Bedouin man, and he tied his camel outside of the house of the Prophet. And the Sahaba knew that Nu'iman was the, was the prankster. So they just. They just kind of, you know, drew Nu'iman's attention and said, Hey, Nu'iman, check it out, there's a camel there. So Nu'iman, what did he do? He took the camel and he slaughtered it. You know, he decided to make a feast out of that man's camel. When the man came outside of the house of the Prophet ﷺ, he started to scream. He said, where did my camel go? Where did my camel go? And the Prophet ﷺ asked the Sahaba and the Sahaba told Rasulullah ﷺ that Nu'iman was the one who took the camel and he slaughtered it. Nu'iman was hiding in a ditch and he covered himself in dirt and palm leaves and the Prophet ﷺ went to him and he picked him out of the dust and he dusted his face off and Rasulullah ﷺ was laughing with him. And the Prophet ﷺ actually ended up paying the man the value of his camel and more and then the Prophet ﷺ had a feast on the camel that Nu'iman slaughtered. So Rasulullah ﷺ appreciated this man and all of the pranks that he used to pull and, and his personality and the laughter that he would bring to the Sahaba. But imagine this. Um Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, she narrates a very funny hadith. He said, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he wanted to go on a journey. So he decided to take Nu'iman uh, ibn Amr and Suwaybit ibn Harmala, another Sahabi with him, on that journey. He put Suwaybit in charge of the food. What happened was they're on this journey. Nu'iman says to Suwaybit, look, I'm hungry, can you give me some food? And he says, Hatta yadiyu Abu Bakr. He said, until Abu Bakr comes and gives me permission, you can't touch this food. So Nu'iman got upset. But Nu'iman decided to, to take his revenge out on Suwaybit in other ways. He goes to a group of people that was passing by. And he says, hey, look, I've got this slave that I would like to sell to you. But he's really intelligent. He's Arab. And he's going to insist that he's free whenever you take him. So do you want him or not? So he said, yeah, sure, we'll take him. So he said, okay, I'll sell him to you for 10 dirhams. So he takes them to Suwaybit and he says, there he is. So they jump on Suwaybit and they start to capture him and lock him up. And Suwaybit says, Ana hur, ana hur, I'm free, I'm free. And they say, yeah, your master said you would say that. And Nu'iman was just sitting there watching and not saying a word. <laughs> so Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came back and he found Nu'iman and the companions. And he said, what happened to Suwaybit? And so they told Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu what happened to Suwaybit. And so... They went after that tribe and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu gave them back their money and they freed Suwaybit. You know, they went back to the Prophet sallallahu and Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha. She says, فَضَحِكَ عَلَيْهَا صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَأَصْحَابُهُ حَوْلًا He said that Rasulullah sallallahu and his companions laughed for an entire year over that incident because of how funny it was. 
And this continued even after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. You know, he had his status and he was, the Sahaba always came to expect pranks from him. And in the time of Uthman anhu, he pulled another extreme prank. There was a blind man in the masjid once who needed to urinate. Obviously in that time, you know, someone would go and would guide the blind man outside of the masjid. So Nu'iman said, let me take care of it. Nu'iman went to the blind man, he took him to the other corner of the masjid. So when the man urinated, everybody came running at the man, so the man got scared. He said, who was the young man who brought me here in the first place? They said, it must have been Nu'iman. He said, where's Nu'iman? I want to teach him a lesson. Somebody take me to Nu'iman. So Nu'iman came back to the man, he changed his voice and he said, you're looking for Nu'iman? He said, yeah. So he grabbed the man by the hand and he took him to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Khalifa. <laughs> and the man jumped on Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they pulled Uthman radiallahu anhu away and Uthman was laughing because he'd understood what had happened and Nu'iman ran away. So subhanAllah, you see that this man was, he shows us a few things. Number one, he shows us that the Prophet ﷺ and his companions were people that were capable of having fun. But of course, with its conditions. Now you could say Nu'iman always pushed it to the extreme. But at the same time, we knew his limits. And the Prophet ﷺ came to expect that type of laughter and those types of pranks from Nu'iman. And he always paid for his pranks, literally. And he was a joy to have around. And it shows you that our deen has laughter. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِسَّامٍ ضَحَاكٍ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he smiled and he laughed صلى الله عليه وسلم, but of course he observed the conditions of joking where he never lied صلى الله عليه وسلم, when he joked. So let's appreciate the different types of personalities inshallah we have in our community and let's build inshallah a good relationship with everyone and think about it. This man witnessed Badr, Uhud, Khandaq and he witnessed the second pledge of Aqaba. This was a righteous man. So this righteous man was able to joke in that way but you know what, as the sources say, as Dhabi rahimahullah says, when the fitna took place between Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the others, uh, Nu'iman radiallahu ta'ala anhu could never smile and laugh after that. So it showed you that this wasn't a man that was also, he wasn't disconnected from reality because of his joking and his laughter. He was still very much connected to the condition of the ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the balance of the sahaba, the, the balanced personalities that the sahaba had. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us an ummah that is pleasing to him and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah to raise us with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions and to allow us to pray, play practical pranks on each other in Jannah, insha'Allah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.